Behind the scenes, everyone knew that this is what he was engaged in. This was an open secret in Hollywood. Did you know about Diddy Pierce? No, I didn't, no. We really are just getting to the beginning of everything. People at the upper echelons of society and politics knew about this and they were okay with it. I said there's a race piece to this. And people, by virtue of being black, are asked to denounce Diddy because they're supposed to be representing blackness in the black community. More it's amazing, Mark, that you always I, see a I'm race not, angle I'm not here. For, I'm, I'm rejecting the narrative that I've introduced race into this conversation. The conversation you literally about said race, you wanted to bring uh, race up. You did. I didn't say random you white people. In, I didn't say random white people. Okay. I said, I said, I said white people in Hollywood. To me, it feels like they're both wearing blackface. I can't sort through all of Kamala's various accents. There's so many of them. She's in front of a Latina crowd. Suddenly, she's Selena, you know, and she's speaking like a Latina. You know, I, I can't deal with it. it. As a black person, you should vote for the person that uplifts the black community. That's her. How does she disrespect you? By placating to me, by giving me uh, word salads and all kind of nonsense, acting like she doesn't have to answer questions, being the artful dodger. And if she wants to get down, act like she's black, well. Master class performance by Candace Owens on the Piers Morgan Show, debating Mark Lamont, all I think about is race. Hill, okay, you guys, listen, for those who aren't familiar, you haven't seen this yet, this, you're really going to enjoy this, actually. I'm going to play a few clips. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it because this needs to be said, okay? Candace is on the Pierce Morgan Show. They're talking about P. Diddy. They're talking about the black community, the black response, black celebrities, just people's response in general as it relates to the Diddy issue. Of course, race gets brought up by Lamont because that's all he thinks about. And you guys, Candace... The way she surgically dismantles people's nonsensical arguments, it's textbook, flawless, okay? Highly intelligent, extremely articulate, and she's just, this is just a masterclass performance yet again, again, and she's done this before on Pierce Morgan's the other people she debated, but this is not the first time she's debated Mark Lamont Hill. You guys, for those who don't remember, I've kept up with these type of debates. But this is the same guy who says men can get pregnant, right, and have babies, right? So they had this amazing debate, completely embarrassed him. She demolished him then, and she's, she completely destroyed him on the Pierce Morgan show. And you just see him unraveling. You see an emotional, hyper-emotional man who always fixates on race. He can't get white people out of his mind. It's always the white man's fault. Right. People who think like him, you know, I debate these folks all the time on this channel. They complain about the same issues and it's just embarrassing. He just comes off completely unhinged. Everything that he puts out, everything he has to say is always a white person is rooted in a white man's responsible for race on his brain all the time. I call these people color justice warriors. OK, it's a problem that we have in the black community. And it's simply, I, I believe that it's one of the major things that's holding us back, right? We always blame white folks for everything, right? It's never, it's never our fault, okay? At the end of that rainbow, it's a white leprechaun that's causing us problems. Okay, but listen, let's get into this debate. Uh, and oh, I can't wait to get your thoughts on it. She destroys him. Not only that, the man starts to unravel. It's embarrassing. But to make matters worse, you guys, I, I don't know. It just to me personally, it just seems like he just hasn't. He's been very unstable ever since, you know, he got fired from I think it was CNN. You guys, he hasn't been the same. And this this just, you know, he just looks he looks unhinged. What are they talking about? You guys, I'm gonna give you a little we're going to go over a couple clips. But specifically, they start touching on the P. Diddy issue, touching on P. Diddy. No Diddy. All right, let me. Let me, let me they start referencing the p diddy issue okay they talk about that candace starts to talk about how the response from celebrities is non-existent okay like he's done diddy has done these horrific things we've seen the allegations we've seen the evidence some of the evidence yet she's pointing out how these so-called celebrities who are normally so vocal about any other social justice issue any issue relating to black folks i.e lebron james and they are dead silent. And she's basically correlating because, listen, they participate in these parties, right? And so this is why there's such a silence within Hollywood, 
within the entertainment industry as well as it relates to this Diddy situation. Why? Because more likely a lot of people are complicit. So this is how she starts it off. And of course, your boy Mark drops the race card. So let's go ahead and uh, hear what they have to say. <laughs> Brace yourself who said something because that was the most troubling for me with LeBron James. I'm like, we actually have video evidence of this. Like everybody should be saying something about this if you purport mm -hmm. to care about women. And him and Chrissy Teigen are typically very loud on top of his wife, especially. Mm -hmm. um, so if I missed that and he said something about Cassie, good for John Legend. That makes he, he and I are on the exact same side on that. But it, it's not enough that it's just John Legend. Like there needs to be a lot more people in Hollywood mm -hmm. that are speaking out about what's happening. Let me ask you. Uh, There's Mark, a race piece to this too. Though. Can we talk about the race piece of this? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was literally about to ask you about that. No, so, we... so you go ahead, Mark. Go on. Because <laughs> it's it's really fascinating here, right? So we're saying Diddy does this awful thing again. Diddy, despicable monster. No defense of Diddy. We're asking all all the prominent black people to speak out against it, right? But there is never a call for white people to denounce the like. No one says. Everybody who ever met Harvey, white guy who's ever met Harvey Weinstein, yes, needs was. to say something. Yes, or, there was. Or, 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 of course or, there was. No, no, no. Literally <laughs> everyone Pierce. who ever worked with him was asked Pierce. to Pierce. condemn it. And most of them rushed to do it. Piers, Piers, Piers. So let me let me just pause it there. I, I know I, I'm not going to pause a lot, I promise. But let me, just, let me just preference it by saying this. This is the issue. Anytime we're talking about, one, nobody brought up race as a thing, right? But... Anytime we're trying to hold a black person accountable, anytime we're trying to point out a flaw or an issue or something that needs to change, there's always a color justice warrior that's going to say, hey, hold on, but you don't do this to white folks, right? You don't you don't give them the same. You don't say this to them. You guys, this is the problem right here. This is it right here. This is why stuff can't get done. This is why there there's a slow progression within our community because we hate to have to hold ourselves accountable without blaming somebody else. That is the biggest, biggest problem. And it's so consistent, it's ridiculous. You can't point nothing out without somebody wanting to take it back and say, hey, there's a white man responsible for this 400 years ago, 200 years ago, 60 years ago, 30 days ago, right? We just can't have a conversation about what we need to do and what we need to fix without introducing what the white man has done or what they are doing and how they do things on their side of the fence, right? Ridiculous. But anyways, I just had, I just had to say, let's, let's, let's get back into it. I want you to listen to what I said again, because you just disagreed with the point I did not make. I didn't say that all, everyone in Hollywood was not challenged to, to address Weinstein. I said there's a race piece to this. And people, by virtue of being black, are asked to denounce Diddy because they're supposed to be representing blackness in the black community. No, no, no. I'm saying no, that no, white no. people, no, by no, virtue no, of their no, whiteness. No, no, no. No, no. Hang on. That's exactly what Candace I said. I said. That's exactly what Candace just said. I said, no, Mark. I'm talking about Candace, not you. I'm not saying every black person okay. has to comment on it because they're black. I'm saying I've been struck I, by the fact there is a massively smaller number of high-profile black celebrities who have spoken out comparative to what happened when Weinstein went down. So you're right that there is a race element to this, but it's the reverse but one. People, hang on, why, hang why on, black people hang on, are, why, hang on. Let me finish. It's the reverse point to the one you're making. It actually is skewed against the white guy. He got more of a lambasting from celebrities than the black guy who's done arguably worse stuff. I wish I had the I, same race goggles. It's amazing, Mark, that you always I, see a I'm race not, angle not here. The reason why I specifically called out LeBron James and these types is because they themselves are wearing the same race goggles. They purport to be the superheroes in the black community that every time there's some sort of a social injustice playing out against a black victim, they use their platforms to speak out about it because they say, oh, it's so unfair that black people are not being believed. It's so unfair. Hashtag George Floyd, hashtag this person. So if you are going to assert yourself as a leader, when black people make claims before they're proven in court, this might be a good time to do it when you have a man who had so much power in Hollywood and you just have an onslaught of black artists coming out saying that they were victimized by him. It might be a good time to use your platform. I'm calling out the hypocrisy and the double standard of that. If LeBron James had kept his mouth shut on every other issue and said nothing, I wouldn't be like, hey, why is LeBron James being quiet on this issue? I'd say he doesn't typically weigh in on anything. So it wouldn't make sense to put pressure 
pressure on him to do it. That would be the scenario in which what you are saying would make sense. It's the exact opposite. I'm saying keep the exact same energy that you have had on every other black issue when it comes to your door and it pertains to a friend of yours that you were partying with. I think that's. And she is a hundred percent correct. What she is talking about is the hypocrisy from people who, again, like I said, they are color justice warriors. They come out here, every little thing, they only want to nitpick things when it's a white person that did something to a black person, right? I talk about the police shootings all the time on this channel. The only time they want to come out and use their platform and say, you know, white rate, you know, racism, this and white supremacy, that and. Uh, it's unfair. This is unjust. I'm taking a knee. I'm marching with Black Lives Matter. It's only when it is <laughs> advantageous for them to do it. LeBron has admitted to going to his party like a lot of other people. Ashton Kutcher told him ain't no party like a Diddy party. I think that was LeBron. But, you know, a lot of people have gone to his party. Now he's been he's accused and there's evidence and there's some concrete evidence about his abuse of said power and his abuse to women, men and children, right? He's terrorizing, you know, everybody. Now you don't have anything to say. Uh, this is the perfect time. And so she's calling it out. She's absolutely correct. And so Mark now is he's trying to make an argument. Obviously, again, like I said before, anytime you have people who are just saturated in emotional fallacies it's very hard for them to look at something logically mark likes to he likes to argue he he likes to make nonsensical arguments he likes to nitpick things that are irrelevant to the conversation and try to put a focus on it to distract you from the core conversation the core issue that's being discussed pretty sensible yeah. Um, Mark, okay. let, where is just... Do you mind if I respond to that? Sure. Because I, 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 I just, I, there are three points that were made that I'd like to respond to. First thing is, I'm, I'm rejecting the narrative that I've introduced race into this conversation. The conversation You literally about said race, you wanted uh, to bring race uh, up. You did. You literally said, <laughs> I right, want to bring I'm race gonna, up. I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> I you literally stopped. <laughs> caught red-handed. <laughs> they caught him in the moment. He can't even recall... The fact that he actually introduced race into this whole discussion by saying that there's a race component to it. Now he's denying that he even brought up race to begin with, you guys. This is what we're talking about. He has crayons in his head. If you were to just pull his head back, open up, looked inside his ear, you're going to see a box of crayons in there. You're going to see everything about his whole position, his views on life. His, his false reality is rooted in racism. That's all he can see, you guys. That's it. All he sees is racism. You know, and again, this is something that these color justice warriors do all the time. That the that was in response. Response. You did it. Uh, do, 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 all right, I'm going to ask you to allow me to finish a sentence uninterrupted the way you have, Candace. Then you can hear why you're actually not correct. Hear what I'm saying. When I said I want to bring race into this, it was in response to the point that Candace had made five minutes prior. When you watch this on TV, y'all, or on YouTube, rewind, then you'll see this. When she said LeBron James has spoken out for the black community, right? And, and, and historically, but isn't saying anything here. Mm. That was the first time that race was mentioned. My invocation of race was in response to that. And as you conceded just a moment ago, when you disagreed with me, you were saying that you weren't asking all, you, you, you were saying that there's a relatively lower response from the black community mm. uh, on this issue than prior issues. Not black so my, community, again, my invocation of race. What, Not black community. High okay. profile celebrity. Black celebrity. Black fair, black enough, fair enough, fair enough. It's a, but, very, but, 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 it's but a much smaller part of the is, community. Uh, I agree with you, but the fundamental point here is when I said I'm introducing race, it was to respond to a claim that was already race, racialized around LeBron James five to ten minutes prior. Mm -hmm. Now, to actually address the issue that I was responding to because I didn't introduce race into the conversation, the idea here for me is when Harvey Weinstein does something, Hollywood has to respond. When Diddy does something, Black people have to respond. Now, I happen to believe that as a black person with a public platform, an athlete, an actress, or a, a journalist, we should respond to the Diddy thing. I don't think that we should ignore our so responsibility what are you complaining to black about? communities. I'm okay, but my, my, my complaint is, is that when, we, when black people don't do it, we have a we are cr criticized differently than when the white guy doesn't do it. So hang, on, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Mark, I'm so, sorry. So, but so, the so idea... People, so, so, the... so, and again, this is the issue with people who think like him. Always so fixated on what white people are doing. You're not white. Why does it matter how they address issues amongst themselves, amongst their group? Why do we care how, if it's a Hispanic issue, how they address issues within their group? If it's an Asian person, how, why, do, why does it matter how they address issues within their group? We are so obsessed with white people. It's disgusting, you guys. Listen, and, and let me be clear. I love everybody, okay? But it's, it's color justice warriors that are, ha they have this sick obsession with what white people do, how white people view them. And a lot of times you ask them, they're not even studying us, you guys, like that. They're just not, okay? And it's just sad. It's sad because just to his point, again, this goes back to the accountability piece. Like I said earlier, you have black people who stand up who want to hold P. Diddy or other people who, who are like him or whatever within our community accountable, i.e. R. Kelly. And we're like, listen, this is unacceptable. We don't appreciate that. And then as we're trying to dig into the issue and call out the bad behavior, call out the sick behavior, call out the criminal behavior, i.e. or within our community, the first thing a color justice warrior says is, how come you don't say that to the white person that does it? How come, how come you don't use that same energy to white people, right? Like, this is what happens. What does that have to do with us addressing this issue of accountability? This is what I'm saying. It's it's like black folks become accountophobic, you guys. And I say it all the time. We suffer from accountophobia, right? There's like a fear of being held accountable. And when you're not willing to hold somebody accountable, guess what they keep doing? The same thing over and over again. Black folks are accountophobic. And that is our biggest issue. We've got to a place where if we're not coddling or making excuses or using, you know, slavery or systemic racism or racism or white, whatever, then it's not okay to talk about what we did and what we're doing wrong. Okay. And listen, I'm a firm believer. I say it all the time. <laughs> systemic racism and racism and slavery is maybe how we got here. It is not the reason why we are still here in these conditions of of within our culture, right? So, um, and again, if we keep making these excuses, guys, we're not gonna we're not gonna get anywhere. So, and listen, look at look at Mark. Mark is a clown. He's about to he's about to show his he's about to put on the whole clown suit and act a fool. You're gonna start seeing him just unravel, you guys, and. The idea that people were running around asking random white people in the street about Harvey Weinstein is ridiculous. They're not doing it. I didn't say with, that. And they're not doing it with random black that. people in the street either. I didn't say that. I'm talking... That's a straw man. That I'm is a talking, straw man. That no, is not. a straw, the straw man. man. I didn't argument say is, random white people. No, no, you I are conflating. I didn't say random you white are people. Conflating. In, I didn't say random white people okay. in the street. I said, I, Hang said, on. I said white people in Hollywood. Hang on. I said white people in Hollywood, not white people in the street. I understand, but I'm deliberately... I'm conflating two things. That's the same. I'm, I'm, I'm conflating... I know you are. ...high-profile black celebrities and high-profile white celebrities and how they responded to Weinstein and to Diddy, and it's been very different. The volume of, of right. white celebrities who denounced Weinstein is, was far higher is, than it's been with Diddy. And my response to that is, when a Weinstein happens, pe people didn't say, hey, where are the high-profile white... Hollywood celebrities. What they said is, where are the high-profile celebrities? Where are the Hollywood types? They were asking Will Smith as much as they were asking Heidi Klum. When it comes to Diddy, they're only asking for black people. Well, hang on, Candace, hang on. Again, Mark. It, hang Mark. on, I didn't finish the sentence yet. Let me finish the sentence before you disagree you, with no, it. No, you're wrong. Pierce. Candace literally mentioned Ashton Pierce. Kutcher, who last time I checked is a white guy. <laughs> mentioned Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher's white. Ashton Kutcher. I, my, OK. He's white. Again, I want you to hear what I'm actually saying in that. I want you to actually hear what I'm saying and, dis and disagree with what I'm saying and not what I'm not saying. The conversation about Harvey Weinstein, and I challenge you to show me any piece of evidence mm. where you call... <laughs> Anytime somebody, when they start talking, doing all this, <laughs> you know, what is this, Triple H? He's doing all this? and Yeah. <laughs> you lost. 
Anytime you got to start talking with your hands like this, you're done. Okay. You lost the argument. You're done. Okay. You're absolutely done. And look at <laughs> Look at him. You guys, he's unwrapped. He's unhinged. Why? Because he knows. You know, it's one thing. Instead of just acknowledging that, you know what? I was wrong. He's going to double down. He just continued to just dig himself deeper because he didn't want to just admit that he was wrong. That he was wrong. And earlier in this day, look at Candace. Candace is like, Candace is chilling. She's chilling. When you know you won an argument, you just let you just sit there and let the person just crash into the wall. You just let him. She's just watching him just destroy himself. He did this to himself. You guys, this is like, this is embarrassing. This whole thing was embarrassing. And and I'm sitting watching it just like, Mark, dude, it's it's one of those it's the biggest problems with people who think they're more they're they're the most intelligent person in the room. They think that they're so smart, right? Mark one of the Mark, Mark's biggest downfall, you guys, honestly, and I've watched a lot of his debates and it's not that he he he's not it's not that he's not intelligent. The problem is, is his, his ego, his ego is his problem, right? And let me, and let me just, his ego is his problem. And what I've noticed about Mark is that he suffers from the idea that he himself, he believes that he is the smartest person. But he's not so smart to realize when a smart person has actually showed up. That is Mark's problem. I, I kid you not, you guys. Those who know him, I'm not saying he's not smart. I'm saying he's not smart enough to recognize when a smart person has showed up. And, and just because you're smart doesn't mean you're intelligent. And just because you're intelligent doesn't mean you're wise. Now, I don't know where that came from. That's just off the top of my head. But, you know, it means something, you guys. And listen, let me just play a few more minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it so it's not too long. But he's, <laughs> Candace knows she already won the argument, the debate. Mark is about to lose himself. He's about to bust a blood vessel. Okay. He's hyper emotional. He's always been like this. He's out of control. He's completely unhinged. And it's just going to get worse throughout this interview. And it's embarrassing, guys. It's embarrassing. It's all that and said, hey, I'd love to hear from some high profile white celebrities. You've never said white. You just said high profile celebrities. Maybe to you, Hollywood just means white. But in general, the idea here for, 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 for Weinstein was we want his peers to speak out. We want his peers to say something. We want white people, mm. black people. Who are, we just want his peers to say something. But when black people don't do it, it is framed as some kind of fail, some kind of specific or, or, or unique moral failure. And that's the idea that I'm challenging here. Again, I want everybody to speak out against both of those monsters. Okay. But I'm saying let's the, the not slight treat floor, one okay, differently Mark, than the other. Mark. With respect, the slight mind, floor is that Candice, mind, just Candice like actually said LeBron and Ashton Kutcher. And last time I checked, Ashton because Kutcher, they were and this peers. may not be the case, but I believe he still identifies as a white guy. Last I checked, you're not Candace Owens. Last I checked, you're not Candace Owens. I'm criticizing you right now, Pierce, not Candace Owens. So you can't say, well, Candace said it. Y'all aren't, y'all aren't, y'all are not a buddy comedy here. I'm critiquing your approach and coverage of this conversation. Right. And you can't say, well, Candace said it. I didn't disagree with Candace. I disagree with you on that particular point. <laughs> okay. Mark. Okay, let's take Mark, a little I just, beat. I do want to say... <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, oh, Candace said it. You can't say... Candace? I don't think you could say, I would like to introduce race, and then 30 seconds later say, I did not introduce race. I mean, the records will show. You definitely introduced race. And I brought up LeBron James, and for a very specific reason, because he was quite literally at the parties, and it's because he's used his platform to speak out on black victimization, not because he was black. I was pointing out the astounding hypocrisy. I didn't say, let's talk about LeBron James because he's a black man. I mean, I would have brought up tons of other black people and said, where are their voices? But it wouldn't have made sense because they don't hang out with him and they don't use their platforms. And I did bring up Ashton Kutcher as well and very many other celebrities. I'm pretty sure Chrissy Teigen is not black. Uh, she's Asian. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm completely confused. 
completely lost at what point you were trying to make there. I do think that you do tend to see things through the vein of race because when people are just making a sound point about why it is that there is some interest in LeBron James silence right now. And I think he should speak out because he had a friendship there and because he purports that he cares so much about black victimization and there was a long list of black victims. Right, and Mark, I think it's very I mean, sound. Mark, you can disagree with it. Yeah. And Mark, and Mark, I, I agree with before you, you respond, Mark, 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 I agree, Mark, I, I agree Mark, with the Mark, point that you're on, making, Candace. Mark, all right, I'm going to go ahead and cut it there, you guys. Listen, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about what Candace said? What do you think about what Mark said? And how do you feel about people always turning this thing into a race argument? Is this a race thing? Or is this a Diddy is just wrong and it needs to be dealt with appropriately, right? Um, so I don't know what Mark was trying to, to do. But again, this is, his, this, is, this, is, this is what he does, okay? This is what he does. Um, so anyways, you guys, like, comment, share. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. We'd love to have you as a member. Check out the other videos. And with that, good night and God bless.